Well, it's motor show time once again, and this time it's the turn of Barcelona. And think of Spanish car manufacturers and one name springs to mind, Seat. A company well known for its connections with motorsport and also a company that's been enjoying a real resurge of life in recent years. Seat grabbed the headlines last year when they won the World Rally Championships in their first year in competition in the Seat Ibiza. They are really thought of as a major manufacturer, but here are a few facts that may surprise you. They are the biggest selling car maker in Spain. In 1996, they actually built more cars than Rover. Seat sold more cars than Vauxhall in Europe last year. And they're currently ranked the 14th manufacturer in Europe, ahead of Volvo, Honda and Mazda. Add to all that the fact that their model range has grown from two to seven in just four years. And you realize that they're taking things quite seriously. So what were they up to at the Barcelona Motor Show? Well, they were unveiling another new model to take it to eight. And this is what was hiding underneath those dust sheets. Yet another addition to the ever-expanding Seat range is the Cordoba Varia, or estate to you and I. Surprisingly, this is the first estate car that Seat have ever built. It'll hit the UK in the late autumn and will be available in two models, a 1.6 litre petrol and also a diesel version. The Cordoba Bavario may look like your regular estate car, but it's an estate with a bit of a difference. That's uh, a new niche product, which is uh, a compact estate car or station wagon. Uh, it occupies a niche that nobody else occupies at the moment. Uh, How do you figure that one out? Um, well, niche products is the way to go. It's just smaller. It's about the smallest station wagon you can get. But isn't the whole idea of a station wagon to be a load lugger and to pack heaps of things into it? Isn't that what the idea is all about? Yes, but uh, for the size of its footprint on the road, um, this car has a huge load capacity. Um, the standard car has a 16 cubic foot load base, so that's pretty large. It's as large as a, a vehicle two classes above. But the positioning for the Vario is really a, a sporting shooting brake, if you like. And it's going to be a big hit in places like Italy, for example, where um, a compact load lugger is, uh, is what they're all after. What are we going to see in the Vario range? What, what models will there be? We'll have or? two engines, um, uh, a 90 brake horsepower direct injection turbo diesel and a 1.6 litre 100 brake horsepower petrol. Uh, and those two cars will have very high standard specifications like air conditioning, um, airbags, electric windows, that kind of thing. So that's the new model, but what else is in the Seat range? Everything up from the Arossa you see here today, which is coming to the UK very shortly, Ibiza, Super Mini, Cordoba Lower Medium Saloon, Cordoba Coupe, the SX, then we've got the Toledo hatchback, medium sized, and the Alhambra seven seat MPV. On top of that, we've got an Inca van as well. The Arossa's a, a particular car of a particular size. It's what we call the compact super mini class, which is just beginning to emerge. You've probably seen the new contender from Ford. Well, we're second into that sector. Uh, it's a car that's big on the inside, little on the outside, and it's designed to meet the needs of the motorist beyond the turn of the century, where short journeys will be the uh, order of the day, uh, but comfort and refinement will also be a high requirement. Now, a lot of people know you for your motorsport connections, your rallying connections. How does that benefit you as a manufacturer and benefit your image with the, with the British car buying public? Right. Well, we're now seen increasingly as a sporting mark. As you say, we're reigning world F2 rally champions, which gives us instantly a sporting pedigree. And we've, got a, we've had a flock of people now wanting GTI Ibethas, especially in that amazing green. So it's done a lot for our image. And we're able to deliver. We really are a sporting mark. We have uh, super minis now that do 134 miles an hour. So, you know, there's not many uh, manufacturers that can compete with that. 
Yeah, you do. I mean, just here around us at the Barcelona show, there's sort of, it's very vibrant, there's lots of colours, there's loud music everywhere, as you can hear. Is that the, the image that you're trying to get across? The Seat, you know, look, BMW go for the precision and their engineering. What do you want to say about Seat to the UK, right. um, Carvayan? Well, if you like, we're bottling what the, the Spanish have as a lifestyle, which you've seen today here in Barcelona. If we can bottle that and and kind of painted onto the side of our cars, then uh, this is what people want, the, the kind of joy of life, enjoyment. It's where we are, and you'll see that on almost every brochure we have, enjoy yourself, and we really mean that. And uh, if it means going very quickly in a very bright car, then uh, we're happy with that. Now, of course, it's all image and looking great and enjoyment is one thing, but they have to, to meet up to the engineering standards. Yes. Uh, and in the past, there have been problems. Do you think that the liaison there with, with Volkswagen is helping you as a company to meet those high standards? We've been uh, a member of the Volkswagen Group, wholly owned since 1986. So virtually everything you see here today is part of that union uh, and the huge investment that's gone on over those 12 years. We, we have the most modern factory in the Volkswagen Group the size of 400 football pitches, about 30 kilometres from where we are now. So we've got formidable engineering prowess and we have the advantage of having uh, Europe's largest parent behind us and uh, we can, we're combining that with the unique properties of the, the Spanish culture and uh, we think we've got something really special to offer. Well, it should be, because the Korean company, Kia, are now producing the former Lotus Elan, or the KMS2 as it's now known. It's been available in left-hand drive version in Korea for some time now. They've started to produce a right-hand drive version for the Japanese market, so who knows, it may be back on the streets of Britain very soon. I'll tell you what, we hope so. Everybody here at the Barcelona show by unveiling a world first, the Kangoo, which you can see here beside me. But the question is, what is it? Is it a mini MPV? Is it a van? Is it a car? Well, I don't know, but I know a man who does. The inspiration uh, comes from the enormous success of, of the original R4, which you know went out of uh, production several years ago and was never replaced. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a car which uh, is multi-purpose, it's very simple, it, has, it is at the same time a, um, a leisure vehicle, it's a family vehicle, uh, it has an enormous amount of space, it can sit uh, five uh, adults, uh, and uh, it has a fun look, so it, it's all of that. My next question was going to be, what is it? Is it a mini MPV? Is it a car? Is it a van? But it seems to be a combination of all of those. Well. It's not a, what we in French call monospace because it's not a one-box uh, volume, a you know, one-box uh, car. Uh, on the other hand, uh, contrary to all the other type of little um, light uh, vehicles, light vans, you know, which is basically a box uh, on, onto the front end of a normal car, there it is in fact an autonomous body. It is a completely uh, new uh, creation. And uh, although it has a, a hood, a normal car hood, it has this enormous rear uh, which allows a fantastic amount of, of space. It is indeed a new type of vehicle. There is, you know, there is nothing quite, uh, quite like it. Who do you think is going to buy it? Well, I think there's many type of uh, different customers. Uh, it, will, it will go from uh, uh, families, young families, but we also believe that uh, uh, retirees might, uh, might like this kind of vehicle because uh, it is, on the one hand, extremely uh, functional, um, and it allows a lot of space. I mean, you could, you could imagine, you know, going to a third weekends to a uh, second home somewhere, be it in Cornwall or in the Dordogne, I don't know, <laughs> and there's lots of space. So I think that we, are, we, we don't have one category of people. We, we, we believe that we might have extremes. You know, we might, uh, we might have people who use it as, um, as a, uh, a workplace, almost, you know, uh, I wouldn't say traveling salesman, but people who need a lot of space. And then it might be used only as a, as a leisure vehicle by, let's say, retiree people or very young people. So it is, in fact, uh, 
very, very broad target. Where does it fit into the range? Um, I mean, you talk an awful lot about functional yeah. design, and we've seen that with the new Espace and the Scenic. Yeah. So where does um, Kango fit in? Well, first of all, uh, it will fit in with the price. It is extremely a, a simple vehicle. And you are right to say that I do use a lot of the, the word uh, functional and functionality. What I do hope is that the functionality does not transpire in boredom because uh, what we try to do with all our vehicles is, of course, to, uh, to answer to the functional needs, but to have a, uh, a style associated with the lifestyle of our people who don't want boring, uh, me too kind of products. You've chosen to launch it in a city with more soul than many yes. in Europe, in Barcelona, which is known for its art yes. and its culture. Do you take a lot of inspiration for your design from artists and from absolutely, architecture? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think that, that as a designer you have to uh, be uh, open to all the various influences, be it uh, the normal type of research that one gets from, uh, from marketing, but a lot of the design is also to do with instinct, and the instinct is built up by experience of uh, meeting a lot of people, having nice meals with interesting people. Yesterday, for example, I, I, I had uh, lunch with the great French uh, designer I admire so much, André Putman, and uh, last week with, uh, with somebody else who I like. So I do this regularly to, to talk to people in the, in the world of, of, of the design, in the fine arts. I go to as many uh, exhibitions as possible, I read uh, 70 <laughs> publications a month, you know. You really have to be a cultural sponge. So when will we see the Kangoo on the streets of Britain? Well, Renault aren't too sure yet. They're waiting to see what the European reception's like before they make any decisions. manufacturers are mad about at the moment is lifestyle vehicles and here at Barcelona Citroen have produced what must be the ultimate it's a concept vehicle the Bolingo Coupe de Plage what's it all about well let's take a look take down this and there we have it everything you need for a weekend at the beach you've got your deck chairs you've got room to store your apolons to store your sporting equipment it's based on the Bolingo platform and you know what more could a girl want